Ours is truly an age of statistics, in a country and an era that worships statistical data as super scientific, as offering us the keys to all knowledge, a vast supply of data of all shapes and sizes pours forth upon us. Mostly it pours forth from government. The overall statistics of the economy, the popular gross domestic product data, that's GDP, that permits every economist to be a soothsayer of business conditions come from government. Furthermore, many statistics are byproducts of other governmental activities. Income data from the tax office, unemployment data from the Labour Bureau, trade balance data from the customs offices, data on the money supply and banking from the central bank, and so on. And as new statistical techniques are developed, new divisions of government departments are created to refine and use them. We might also think today of demands from government for companies to keep employment and income data broken down by race and gender. The costs of compiling such statistics are often hidden. In 1956, the federal government employed over 10,000 people just to compile statistics. Today, that number is much bigger. There are 12 major federal government and statistics agencies, each of which has thousands of employees. The Bureau of the Census alone has 4,000 employees and a budget of nearly $4 billion. The Bureau of Labor Statistics has 2,500 employees and a budget of over $600 million. And there's another 10 of these major bureaus. But the great bulk of their data is coerced from private firms who must also employ people to collect and compile them to report to the government. In 1956, it was estimated that in the American utilities industry alone, it cost companies around $32 million to compile all of the data demanded by government. Today, one imagines the figure would be many times that amount. If you adjust the 1956 number for inflation, it is over $303.6 million. Statistics are the eyes and the ears of the bureaucrat, the politician, the socialistic reformer, the managerial elite. Only by statistics can they know, or at least have any idea about what is going on in the economy. Only by statistics can they find out about how many old people have rickets, or how many young people have cavities, or how many Eskimos have defective seal skins. And therefore, only by statistics can these interventionists discover who needs what throughout the economy, and how much federal money should be channeled in what directions. And certainly, only by statistics can the federal government make even a fitful attempt to plan, regulate, control or reform various industries or impose central planning and socialization on the entire economic system. If the government received no railroad statistics, for example, how in the world would it even start to regulate railroad rates, finances and other affairs? How could the government impose price controls if it didn't even know what goods had been sold on the market and what prices were prevailing? Statistics, to repeat, are the eyes and the ears of the interventionists, of the intellectual reformer, the politician, and the government bureaucrat. Now get out.